with these cycles before, you know, I've ridden it down 85% before and I'm still, you know, well up on my investment. And, you know, the idea is long term, you know, you add into the moment. See, what you've got right now is a really interesting juncture. You've got the terrible macro, which is liquidity is being withdrawn from the system at a record rate. So we can use, let, let's say, year on year rate of change of M2 or global M2. That's coming off. Bitcoin's highly correlated. All crypto assets are highly correlated as everything is because liquidity coming out of the system means the price of uh, the denominator goes up and the value of assets goes down. So what you've got is that reverse effect going on right now. Hey guys, welcome back to Library of Wealth. Today we have Raul Powell on his forecast for the crypto market and the massive opportunities he's investing in right now. It's no secret that Powell has been bullish on crypto and now we're starting to see the upside in the market for holders of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Raul will discuss rising interest rates and believes the Federal Reserve will need to step in if the central bank crosses the inflationary threshold. He says the current banking system is in danger of failing and fiat currency will need to undergo significant changes if it wants to avoid eventually collapsing. Raul still anticipates the bull market, and over the course of the next 30 days, he says we're looking at massive opportunity. Let's listen to Raul Powell as he gives his take on the future of the crypto market and what his investment thesis is for the coming few months. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. To be honest, I'm less bullish on Bitcoin versus others because I think others have larger network effects right now, but Bitcoin itself I came up with the idea of this pristine collateral because we've talked about the collateral layer of leverage. So Bitcoin itself is recorded on the blockchain. So that makes it interesting collateral because you know who owns it. Secondly, you can't create more of it. So if you think about US treasuries, which are the collateral of the world, the Federal Reserve essentially can print more dollars or create more and more treasuries. So your collateral in a crisis, actually the yields fall and you're rewarded less in yield terms, although the price rises, for actually lending your collateral to the market. And I'm like, that doesn't really make sense because when things are in really short supply, you should be rewarded more in the yield because somebody wants it and they want to rent it from you. And I thought, well, maybe with Bitcoin, because it works differently because you can't create more of it, then if you need collateral, then you can use this collateral and you'll pay a higher yield for it in times of crisis. So collateral has a proper value and it can't be devalued. And as I said, the importance of the collateral is the fact that you know who is the eventual owner and that's what blockchain does. So I thought, you know, Bitcoin is an amazing collateral. The issue is right now, it's very volatile as a collateral. So if you put it into any risk model in a bank or a fund, you find that it doesn't give you much ability to take leverage because of collateral. Now, not taking excess leverage is actually probably a feature uh, and not a bug, but that's part of the, the issue is it's probably not yet ready for pristine collateral status. But what happens is over time, anything that goes through Metcalfe's law, which is basically adoption effects, which is the number of users on the network and the number of interactions between those users and applications, let's say, as you start getting adoption and they tend to go exponential in Metcalfe's law, then with that, you tend to lower volatility over time. Also, what you get is um, over time, the year on year rate of change of price goes down as well. And we've seen that in Bitcoin and we've seen it in um, most of the adoption effect technologies, even the internet had the same rate of growth that slows down over time. But what you find is the stability and the volatility of things that get adopted goes down. And the more the volatility goes down, the better it is as a collateral layer for the entire system. It was in 2020 when I realized that the outcome to every single economic action that was negative was going to be the printing of more money. And the printing of more money is kind of misunderstood. I think a lot of people think the inflation that we're seeing now is based on monetary printing. I don't believe it is. I believe it was fiscal stimulus plus restricted supply. The monetary printing didn't do that. What it does is it debases a currency. It's kind of a very nasty way of doing things because people don't see it. Because what happens is asset prices go up. So everyone thinks they're getting rich, but in fact, all asset prices go up. So your house here 
It goes up relative against other houses, goes relative against the S&P, goes relative against all things. So you actually don't go anywhere. And what we found is that earnings growth wasn't uh, earnings uh, weren't going up at household level, real earnings. So people were actually getting poorer because of the debasement of currency. And that's how the debasement of currency works. And once I'd figured out this debasement of currency, which is quantitative easing, then I realized that with interest rates as they are and the structure of global debts and aging demographics, this trick is going to be rolled out in a number of different ways. What we saw is a new way in 2000, in 2020, which was fiscal stimulus financed by the central banks. I think we'll see much more of that over time. We'll see yield curve control. There's a number of ways this happens. So I then looked at all assets versus the central bank balance sheets and realized that there was only two assets that actually really outperformed. Most of actually things like gold actually didn't do very well. Real estate was pretty much in line. The S&P 500 was pretty much in line plus earnings. Um, the NASDAQ did better because exponential technologies tend to outperform over time and there's a lot of new technological disruption going on. But the one that really stood out was cryptocurrency over time. It really, even though it boom busts, over time, it massively outperformed because it has two things. One is this money element or the scarcity element that's digitally proven. And the second one is the network adoption effect. So those two things combined kind of hypercharge things in the monetary debasement environment. So then I started looking more into Metcalfe's law and trying to understand, okay, how does this apply to the digital asset space? And I was one of the first people to really start building models around this and realize, okay, this was everything. And this was the fastest adoption of any technology the world had ever seen. And it was being adopted about twice the speed of the internet. And I thought, okay, here is a long-term theme that I'm extremely interested in that I think solves the issue of debasement of currency for me at a personal level and for my clients. And also was investing in a new technology that was showing exponential trend growth. So I just thought, well, this is the one big bet. And so not only did I put 100% of my liquid net worth into this. 100%? In a, yeah, 100%. Okay. And I'm still That's roughly right. there today. Um, and then on top, I and built two, two businesses based on this as well. Money's being taken out of the system. It's more scarce, so assets go down. Fine. So we're in the macro cycle and we're waiting for the turn of the macro cycle when eventually the uh, interest rate markets start changing their perspective and say enough's enough, let's go back to more liquidity. And that'll be the turn in the crypto markets, which I think is coming. Powell says that if his view on the asset allocation process is accurate, then there will be weaker growth and the Fed will begin to come into the picture. He believes the most important thing to do is purchase crypto. Raul notes that the entire financial world is short on the crypto upside. This means that the more prices increase and regulations shift, the more they have to be included in the crypto market. Powell says that regulations have had a bigger influence than anything in the market since the introduction of Ethereum and stablecoins. Raul has always been max long on his positions and continues adding to his portfolio. He has invested across multiple digital hedge funds and has observed that many things are being overbought. He says that during this time in the market, it's smart to immediately seize opportunities and to not wait for new lows to come in. What do you guys think about Raul Powell's take on the future of the crypto market? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.